Let's start again. Okay, so we're going to change a um, UV light for a stair light. Uh, UV bulb number is SA10RL, and the system is a stair light SA8QPA. Um, basically, the first step is to turn off the inlet water, which is the water going into the system. So we're going to turn it off uh, right here with the ball valve. Uh, it's always the shutoff that's before the filter housing. We're then going to go to a tap, just a cold water tap in the house. Yep. And we're going to turn on the tap. Takes the pressure off. Takes the pressure off the system. Once that slows down to a trickle, we can go back and we'll turn off the water after the system so that we don't get any um, or much water coming back. Uh, okay. We can also at the same time turn off this tap which is isolating the filter housing. So I'll take the filter housing out first. Just basically unthread. It's always your standard counterclockwise to take it off, yep. clockwise to just, put it on. Yeah, that's right. And I just pour that out. We're going to leave that to the side. We'll disconnect the power to the UV light. You can just unplug it right at the ballast, the control module. So our pressure's off the system. We're going to disconnect the actual bulb. So we just pull this tab, and that releases the bulb. We just put our hands on the old bulb. Give it a little, just be very careful. You can touch the old bulb with your fingers. You don't want to touch the new bulb with your fingers. Okay. So we just take that one, we'll set it to the side. We're going to check the sleeve on the system, so we're going to basically unthread both nuts at either end. You just want to hold that in place. Removing both nuts. There are two O-rings, basically an O-ring on either side, and you just have to kind of work them out. You're maybe going to have to edit this a bit. So you're just pulling the glass out, or the, the O rings are holding the, the glass? The O rings out? are holding the glass in place, so I'm just kind of. There it is. So once I turned it, it released. Okay. You'll get some water coming out the bottom, you can see here. That's just the water that's been in the system. Okay. Right off the bat, seeing that sleeve, it's in very good shape, which means to me that we can put it back in. It's nice and clear. And what would trigger you to if say it was it coated with iron, orange, um, or heavy, heavy coating of something that what wouldn't allow the like foggy and so on yeah, for the light to penetrate the light needs through. To penetrate yeah, okay. through, yeah. But we still give it a little rinse off. So I'll take a bit of water. What's the life cycle of the tube there? If it's like this, you can probably. Um, in some cases, we have to change them yearly. But if it's like this, um, you know, you'd likely get another couple of years out of it. Have you, has it been in for? It's been there since installation, so almost two, two years. years, not a full two okay. years. And that looks pretty good for two years. We yeah. can see it up against the light here. There's a little bit of shadowing up here. Yeah. But really, there's, you're going to get good UV penetration through there. Yeah. Um, we see a lot of them that are totally coated with orange. and. I guess it and depends stuff. on your water condition yeah, coming into right. your house. Yeah. yeah. So there are two new rings with the actual UV light, and we're going to use those. Again, we don't want to touch that. And I've got two new rings here. We're going to take this old O-ring off and dispose of that. Again, you don't want to touch. Once, once you take the sleeve out, you don't want to touch it with your fingers. You can touch it on either end. Mm -hmm. But preferably if you use gloves or if you use the actual towel. Put it back in. So you just guide it down in place. O rings go on after yep. you put it through. I'll just guide it. So once I put my finger down here and I guide it into place at the bottom, yep. you gotta hold it in place and you just put your two O rings back on. One at the top, roll it down. One at the bottom. 
bottom. And roll now it the up. glass is a little bit bigger than the housing there, so you yep. can yeah okay. This one here goes on the bottom because it has a spring in it. What that spring does is it prevents the bulb if the bulb falls in from breaking. Okay. So you just put that spring up. And again, hand tight. Just hand tight. So at this point in time, what I like to do, um, even without the new bulb in, I like to add pressure to the system. So I'm going to turn on um, the inlet water, but first we're going to put some chlorine into this housing. Sure. Um, So with the new filter, you can put the chlorine right in with the new filter. New filter. The reason you put the chlorine in with the filter is because you want it to disperse in the house properly. And it's always recommended to do new filters when you're doing your new. That's right. Yeah. There's uh, still some uh, paper on that filter there. New filter when you put in your UV light. Yeah. And what about the reverse osmosis? Do those filters at the same time too? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm putting about a cup. Okay. Um, in that housing. Just make sure it sits down. There. Again, with that low a volume, it wouldn't be a concern on a septic system nope, or anything. That's right. just sits up in there you can see the bleach in the reason we put bleach into the system is because we want to make sure that basically the UV light acts as a wall so the UV light kills bacteria coming into the property it cannot kill bacteria after the system so anything after this UV yep. if there's potential contamination within the home you want to make sure that you chlorinate that out. You want to kill that um, by, by putting chlorine into the property. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put pressure onto the filter housing just to make sure it's not going to leak. You find you don't need to use the, the wrench thing to tighten that? No, just hand, hand tight. Yep. We'll, we'll see here if it does want to leak a little bit. And if it does, then we'll readjust it. There is an O-ring in this as well. Yep. What you're hearing there is a seal though. So you. Basically, the water's come up to it and it's sealed. You're putting pressure on yeah. it, yeah. Okay. So you've got full pressure on it. Again, we're checking for leaks here so as well. So we want to watch both ends when we turn on the pressure to the UV. Yes. Again, the reason I do this before I put the light in is because I want to pressurize the system and check for leaks. Yeah. If there are leaks, you want to address those before you put the bulb in. Yeah, I know last year there was a slow leak. Um, and that's all it was. I just had to hand tighten yep. that. I can hear a bit of a leak there, so you can just you can just adjust it. You can actually hear it sizzling there a bit. Okay. <laughs> Let some of the air out. Again, it's okay to do that just to let the air out so that it uh, pressurizes. So there's no leaks. We're good. So you're not going to depressurize it again before you put the bulb in? Uh, nope. We've, nope. I just let a little bit of air out of the system and um, the water is in that chamber. Okay, so the, yep. that's good. There's water in there. There's water and chlorine in there, so you know that there's no contamination going to be in there. Okay, I got it. Um, so really, where this bulb sits, there is no water in there. There shouldn't be. There's correct, yep. So okay. there's no water actually coming in contact with the bulb whatsoever. You drop the new bulb down without touching it again. Mm -hmm. You just take this uh, plug in, and you can see you'll have to. I just want to see where you're holding it here. You'll have so to meet it up with those. Uh, the pins. The yeah. pins, the four pins. It's kind of a. 
a little bit tedious, but you just kind of wiggle it back and forth. That's engaged. You can tell it's engaged because there's the plastic. I can feel it um, okay. right up against the actual bulb. Won't pull it in any further. Okay. No. Push it down. Close that. Cool. Okay. The last step is to reset the ballast. Okay. So our ballast, when we started it, it uh, had A3 on it. A3 means that it needs to be reset or it needs a new bulb in it. So to reset, it's very easy. You just push and hold the button. When the power is disengaged, you basically take this plug in, you plug it in, you hold that button. Continue to hold it until it says R set. Okay. And you beep. And then it comes up 365. Awesome. Okay, that's it. That's good.